Broadcasting from the PLA Situation Room in Roy, New Mexico. You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Now it's time. On Prank Call Nation. Cactus. 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 I'm playing game. Cactus. 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 Am I supposed to be doing this? Cactus. 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 This cocksucker. Cactus. 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 You gotta be crap on my ball. Cactus. 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 It's gonna be a fuck job to edit. Cactus. 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 You're calling me a hobo. Cactus. 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 You don't make a house a pool. Cactus. 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 How about if I come down and punch your head off? Cactus. 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 You think a tracer can stop me? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Get ready for another low quality show. But it'll be slightly better than the last one, at least, because I figured things out around here. You're listening to the Snowplow Show. This is RBCP. This show is sponsored by Rick from Ohio. Thanks, Rick from Ohio. I'm always worried about saying people's last names, so if you're one of the sponsors and you want me to say your name a certain way, or include a a link or whatever, uh, you know, get in touch with me on Patreon or wherever else, and I will fix things. I've had some people tell me never to use their last names, and other people want their real names used. I just don't know, so... So please yell at me if I'm saying your name wrong, because I want to give proper credit to the people that fuck up the show. So I got a pretty amusing email this week from Ryan. He's the one that submitted the, that lady, Pat, who was a religious lady. She ran her own catering business. And I called and said uh, I was with GoDaddy and her, and we deleted her hate-filled website and domain. Uh, she posted on her Facebook, and Ryan sent me the the post that she made, a picture of it. And uh, so here, I'm going to read it. It's a, it's kind of a long one. I mean, it's a, it's a large paragraph. What's on my mind? Well, let me give you a piece of my mind. Hacker slash scam guy, you called me on some I- unidentified number telling me you were from GoDaddy and my website had to be taken down to, due to malicious maligning posts I had made about religion especially Baptist. I don't think I said anything about Baptist, did I? Specifically about Baptist? Anyway, she goes on, I tell you, no, I have not, and I will call GoDaddy myself. Then you keep being calling me, so it's almost impossible to check my site from my phone. That's true, I did call her like a bunch of times right after I deleted all that out. Well, what do you know? My site is fine. Then you have the unmitigated gall. Wow, she uses big words. To call me back from a New York number, uh, that was, by the way, the uh, the rejection hotline, <laughs> and leave the same spill on my voicemail, but this time it's AT&T who's turning off my cell due to my malicious texting. I will pray for you, and woe unto you for slandering Christians. I wasn't slandering Christians, I was slandering her. She also says, by the way, you almost ruined my afternoon with my mother. <laughs> I feel so bad for that. Sorry, Pat. Uh, she, she has a bunch of replies from her friends saying things like, Tell him, Pat. Get him, Patty. Go get him, Pat. <laughs> Lots of support. A really good support network that Pat has. But thank you, Ryan, for sending me this screen capture of Pat's rant about me. That made it all worth it. I need to tell you guys about the iTunes feeds or the, the RSS feeds. Uh, some of them may be broken now, and if your feed is broken, and you're probably not going to hear this if it is broken, hopefully you hear the show through the YouTube channel or something, uh, but there were three feeds for the Snowplow Show and for PLA, and that's because my older feeds, like the feed for PLA Radio and the feed for the phone show, those were both forwarding to the main PLA site, and that worked well, I guess, but it made three different shows show up in iTunes, and it was really confusing. I got confused. I got emails from confused people all the time about that. So I broke the old links. So now the only one, eventually the only one that's going to show up in iTunes will be the main one. So if you're not hearing this, you need to change your feed to phonelosers.org slash feed, or just go into iTunes. It'll be the first one in the list, not the second or the third, but pick the first one that you subscribe to. And the extra two feeds are going to disappear soon. So I'm very sorry for the confusion. 
I've gotten several emails about this because their feeds have stopped working. But I think in the long run, it'll help things out. You know, it'll it'll make things less confusing for people searching for the show. One last thing I need to mention, that guy from the Ghost Tower prank. You guys remember him, right? I was trying to uh, put a new antenna on his tower that would that would be capable of making all ghosts in town visible. Well, guess what? That guy is a TV star. He was on the show Dirty Jobs. And I've got a clip here of him being on the show Dirty Jobs. It's just the host of Dirty Jobs. I guess he's the host. I've never watched the show. And uh, and Kevin, the guy that I made the phone call to, uh, talking with each other. So this is like a one-minute clip, and you can hear Kevin with his his very interesting, cool voice joking around with the host of Dirty Jobs. Here it is. Uh, you guys put up radio towers for a living. Communication tower to everything. Microwave, TV, radio, FM. Two-way, right, yeah. Uh, I guess we're in a little plateau in the high plains, and I see a lot of towers everywhere. Yeah. We put up uh, the majority of almost everything you see around here for the last 50 years in our company history, almost everywhere. The majority of the stuff across the plain states is pretty much our family put stuff up, yeah. Uh, All right, so specifically today, what is the uh, task at hand? Oh, we're uh, going to top off our uh, 330-foot tower for... Uh, for the county here, and uh, we've got a couple sections left, and we'll even might uh, before sunset we might even get some antennas up too. So, all right. Well, at this point, I mean, it's only ten in the morning, but sunset looks like it's going to happen any minute. Do we work through whatever happens? Yeah, we'll, we'll try and work. Uh, we'll have uh, fall protection and everything to work around, even if it gets west or wet or moist or spits or blows. Uh, we'll hopefully, we'll be able to work through it and around it and get get all the iron up in the air for the day. Wet, moist, spits and blows. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What about the weather? I haven't watched the whole show yet. It's on YouTube, and I'm going to have a link to the show in the show notes so you guys can all watch Kevin climb up on towers. And, you know, I thought Kevin would be kind of a stiff old guy in a suit or something with no sense of humor, but Mike is a badass. He climbs towers that are 300 feet tall and and installs antennas and stuff, and you get to see him do this in the YouTube video. So thank you, uh, person on YouTube, a guy named Your Gay Bagel. He posted a link to the episode today, and that's what showed me where it was. Uh, Also, Jordan Mike from Facebook sent it to me, and a few other people mentioned that he was on the show, but they didn't send me links. But thanks, you guys, for showing me this. That's just, that's crazy that that Mike climbs towers and is actually kind of cool in the show. (laughs) The first thing I'm going to do on the show today, I'm going to do a request from a person named Clara Bo. Clara wants me to prank her apartment complex. Uh, in her request, she's complaining that some yuppie assholes took over the, uh, the apartment and doubled the rent. She tells me there are two floors and suggests a range of apartment numbers that I should use. So that always makes things helpful. Uh, she gives me some suggestions about Asian gangs. She wants me to tell them that the triads are forcing me to pay for two apartments and I'm scared their damages will affect my rental credit and that they're running a meth lab next door. And uh, I already made the call. It's done. And I'm sorry, Clara, but I didn't use your Asian gang idea because I was a little confused about uh, the, the premise. I'm slow. But anyway, here's the call. Enjoy this. This is Peter. How can I help you? Uh, hi, I'm in 117, and I was just wondering if um, maybe if you have some drywall there I could use, like just some spare drywall laying around. Gosh, we got rid of everything when we cleaned up the... Um... Oh, you don't have any drywall and joint compound and some paint? What were you trying to do? Oh, um, well, uh, there's I've got a lot of holes in my walls now, and I, I don't think it should be my fault, because... There was this... It's kind you're of, in apartment 117? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. I don't think you're in apartment 117, or you have the wrong property. 117 is a vacant apartment. No, I said 107. 107? Hold on. I show 107 is vacant, too. What apartment do you think you're in, sir? Well, well, I'm on the second floor. So, so then you two, can't be in 107. So is it 207, then? No, 207 is a uh, first floor. Just go outside. Open. Are you in your apartment right now? Well, there's a big pile of drywall in front of the door. I can't really open the door right now. A huge pile of drywall from all my walls. Okay, I'm really confused. What? Ap- okay, what apartment? Okay, what's your last name? Well, well, I, I just stay here with Mike and Steve. I just stay on the couch. Me and my golden retriever. Okay, you're not in 107, and you're not in 117. What other apartment do you think you're in? It doesn't matter. I, I just... Well, if you, don't, if, you can't, if you can't tell me what apartment you're in, I can't help you. Right. Well, I could just come down to the office. 
I thought you, have, you couldn't get outside of your door. If you open up the front door, I, there's an apartment number on there. So if you'll just I, I, tell me that, then I can I'll go out the what, window. I'll go out the window, okay? Well, if you're on the second floor, I don't want you going out the window. So who put the drywall by the front door? Oh, I did. I was looking. Okay, so there was this uh, kind of a treasure map. It's hidden behind a windowsill, and I pulled it out, and it said the 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 gold coins were hidden inside the walls. So I, I busted open all the walls. Like just the bottom foot. Hold on, two, two. Hold on just a second. Okay, what, what, the people that you're staying with, what's their last name? Because I don't want you climbing out the window. Okay, well, is this going to be, um, do they have to pay for it? Because it doesn't seem like we should because it, it's, the treasure map was in here. It's like kind of like you guys left it for us. Okay, what are the people that you're with? What's their last name? Um, I think it's Miller, Steve Miller. Hold on. No, I don't have anybody named Miller here. I mean, I don't want you climbing out the window, so you really need to tell me what apartment number you're in. Okay, I can figure it out later. But are they going to have to pay for this? Well, if there's damage to the apartment, yes. But the damage is, it's kind of your fault, because there was a, a, a treasure map behind the window. Like It's like you guys are playing a joke on us or something. And, the, and the, Matt, where do you think you found out about the treasure map? Well, it was hidden behind the windowsill. It was kind of sticking out. So I pulled it out, and it said the gold... is talking about, like, gold Nazi coins. And um, it said they were in the bottom of the wall. So I tried, like, all the walls in the living room. I, like, knocked out the bottom two feet. And then I tried, like, in the bedroom and the bathroom, and there's no gold coins anywhere. So I'm thinking I'm going to start removing kitchen cabinets and try the walls behind those. No, you don't need to do that. Well, if there's gold coins, then it won't matter because I can pay for the kitchen cabinets with the gold coins. Yeah, but coins. if you remove the kitchen cabinets, you're going to cause more damage than anything. Right, but if there's gold coins behind the kitchen cabinets, then I can and pay... What, and what apartment do you live in, sir? I can pay for the damages, you know? That's not what I'm asking you, sir. I'm asking you what apartment you live in. I know. You've asked me that like a billion times, and you've put me on hold a billion times. I'm just trying to say, like, I don't think we should have to pay for it. I think you do. If you're going to cause damage to that apartment, then you're going to need to pay for those damages, sir. Well, I believe the damage is your fault because you guys left a treasure map in here. Um, I don't it's... believe that, sir. I believe that the damages will be your fault, especially if you damage those walls. Not if there's a treasure map. Cause there's well, nothing... you, didn't bring it, you did not bring that to our attention in the office, sir. So, I mean, before you started knocking holes in walls and trying to remove cabinets in the kitchen, you should have notified the office about what's going on in your apartment and not just start removing sheetrock in cabinets, sir, you will be responsible for charges. Okay, well, is there a main water shutoff, or I'm like a main water shutoff just for my apartment? Or does it have to shut off the whole building? Um, that I do not know. Um, is there a reason why we would need to shut off water to your apartment? Not yet, but I want to remove the toilet because there's a wall behind there I can't really get to with the hammer. Okay, and what apartment are you in, sir? Is it 114 maybe? I don't know. How You don't know what apartment you live in? I can't get out the door right now because there's drywall stacked in front of the front door. And who dry, who stacked the drywall in front of the front door? I did. I can get. I can remove it eventually. I'm just. I'm busy with all this wall stuff. Okay. And what is your name? My name is Roy. Your name is Roy. Yes. What's your last name, Roy? I can maybe look you up in the system so I can see what apartment oh, I'm not, you live I, in. I'm, I'm not in the system. I live off the grid. It's just me and my Doberman. Okay, so who is the apartment's just, name in? I just stay on the couch. I thought it was Steve. Mike you thought was, it was Steve? Yeah, but there's a lot of people that live here, so I don't know for sure. So there's a lot I, of people that live in your apartment? Yeah, I mean, originally, um, Steve was my drug dealer. Okay, but, all right. Well, you have a great day, sir, okay? Why? If you what? cannot tell me where you live at, then obviously... I mean, I don't know if this is a legitimate phone call. I mean, I'm trying to get information from you so that way we can make sure that you can actually get out of your apartment easily in case if there is an emergency. No, there's no emergency. Um, I mean, I, there could be a water issue soon because I'm going to take the toilet out, and I've never done that before. You don't. You do not but, need to remove the toilet because if you remove the toilet and you cause damages, you will be responsible for the damages. Listen, if there are gold doubloons behind the wall, behind the toilet then it doesn't matter. I'm going to be able to pay for the damages. You know? Hopefully all that background conversation was about me. I don't know for sure, though, but let's just assume it was. I think it's time for some news. Here, listen to some news. 
Have you heard about this? The Texas teenager who made a home in a Walmart, living there for four days before finally being discovered. ABC's Ryan Smith has that story. Workers at this Walmart in a Dallas suburb getting a huge surprise. A 14-year-old boy found living in the store for four days. These photos show the two places where the boy hid. This one in a display of baby products and strollers, and one behind this stack of paper towels and toilet paper. Customers are stunned. Because you would never expect that you're at Walmart, there's someone living there and has been living there for four days. That's crazy. The teen apparently stole items from the store to eat and slept in this makeshift bed. To avoid suspicion, the boy even took clothes from the rack, changing his outfit every few hours, even using diapers instead of the bathroom to avoid detection. I'm wondering what his parents think and how come he didn't come home or why aren't they worried about him? But it was this trail of trash that led Walmart workers to his hiding place. The boy is back with his parents, but still unanswered this morning why he chose to hide in the store for so long. Ryan Smith, ABC News, New York. So yeah, several people sent me that and said I should make prank calls to the Walmart. They didn't say what kind of prank calls, but I gave it a try. And in this first call, there's just lots of confusion. I don't think the first lady gets it. Hello, can I have the baby department? The infants? Sure. What baby are you talking about? Okay, infants. Sorry, I didn't know what it was called. Infants? Okay, hold on. Newspaper article said the baby aisle. Darn it. Hello? Did I reach the infants department? Yeah, I'll go over there. I, I am an infant. Uh, I just had a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I needed to find out, like, uh, like um, I, I was in the news recently because I, I had a, I, I built a home in the infants department and uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I lost my wallet. Can you check and see if my wallet's there? Okay, I'll, I'll find it for you. Okay, are you going to put, are you gonna put uh -huh. me on hold? No, it's okay. What do I'll you mean it's okay? I'll go get it. Do you understand my request? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, are you looking for my wallet then? Yeah. Are you finding it? No, I don't find it. Where'd you look at? I don't know. You don't know where you looked at? No. Nah. How do you not know that? Okay, I'll, I'll go in there and say, uh, I'll go find it. Uh, okay, I'm going to hold. I'll okay. wait for you. Okay. What is it that you needed, sir? Uh, my wallet. I left my wallet behind. Okay, where did you leave it? Uh, well, I, I built a home in the infant section, and the, uh, I guess the employees, you know, the employees discovered it. So I had to leave, but I, I can't find my wallet now. I was thinking maybe I left it like up on a shelf where I was living oh, in the okay. infants department. Mm. So she just hung up on me. The, the last lady I talked to, I don't know how many people I talked to, I think three, got hung up on. And I called back and I was immediately connected to the manager this time. Hello, could I have the department that has the toilet paper in it? Hello? <laughs> This is Jordan, go ahead. Hello, which department did I reach? This is co-manager Jordan, how can I help you? Co-manager? Right. Oh, okay, now I just needed the, the department that has the toilet paper. Uh, what can I help you with? Oh, well, I, I was uh, living over by the toilet paper recently, and I, I think I left my wallet there. I was wondering if someone could check and see if my wallet's there. Could you describe the wallet? Uh, it's black, and it has my ID in it. Sure, we can check that. Where by the toilet paper was it? Um... Kind of, kind of up, up a couple shelves. There's like a I, I built kind of a there's, fort, there's fort out there's of toilet. Big, there's a big whole section of toilet paper, like the entire steel. So, do you have any ideas? Is it the end of the aisle? Is it the middle of the aisle? What? Oh, uh, it's more like the middle, and it, it's up. So you have to like climb up on a shelf. Um, and there's a bed back there with uh, some of my personal belongings, but I didn't think I left my wallet. Oh, is that right? Yeah. That's a number I can reach you at. Is it a 661 a good number to reach you? Sure. But, I mean, you're not going to hang up, right? I was just hoping you can, I can hold and you can well, check. Just, and see just, in case, just in case we get disconnected, I would like um, to go ahead and get your number. You know. Yeah, I just really need that wallet oh, oh, back. Because there, there's, sure, uh, sure. you know, there's like $7 in cash in there. Sure, yeah. No, seven's a lot of money. I'll see if I can check the loss and I'll see if we can get your, uh, get your wallet for you. Let me go ahead and put you on hold, okay? Okay. 
He didn't put me on hold at all. That was a hang-up. He just hung right up on me. I tried calling back that day and I just kept getting him over and over. I think he was watching the caller ID and every time the Skype number came up, he would just pick up himself. So then again, I called today and after about 30 rings, not exaggerating, I reached Electronics and had this short conversation with the Electronics guy. Electronics. Hello, uh, this is Steven from the corporate office with Walmart. Okay. And, uh, who am I speaking with? Uh, Alejandro and Electronics. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, it seems like we've been doing some research about this kid that was uh, living in your Walmart there. Alrighty. And and uh, we've discovered that you were aiding him, aiding and abetting him okay. living there. Uh, how, how do you plead? And that's it. All three calls, pretty much a huge failure. I hope maybe one or two of you found those mildly amusing, because I doubt many other people did. I'm really jealous of this kid, though, because I have been wanting to spend the night in a Walmart, or actually a Target, for uh, over 20 years now. Ever since the movie Career Opportunities came out, I've wanted to spend the night in a Target and reenact the entire night that uh, James Dodge had in that movie. And I'm, I'm sure nobody knows what I'm talking about. It's an old John Hughes movie probably the last good movie he ever made. And by good, I mean it was pretty bad, but that is everyone's homework assignment tonight. You need to find career opportunities. It came out around 1991, maybe, and you have to watch it. No matter how bad it is, no matter how much you hate it, you need to watch career opportunities. This is like the, the, when I told Dwight to watch UHF. Even if you hate it, you have to watch it just once. One of these days though, and I swear this is gonna happen, this isn't just a fantasy of mine, I'm gonna hide out in a Target until they close, and, and I'm gonna spend the night in Target, and it's gonna be awesome. And I'll probably get arrested for a burglary, but whatever, I don't care. It's gonna happen. I will do this someday. That's a promise. That, that's gonna be a Patreon goal. Illegally spend the night inside of a Target. I'm gonna wrap up the show with a couple calls I made today to some people on Yelp, and it's basically the same call each time, but I kind of enjoyed these. I'm Dickie Say Grill. This is Brianna speaking. How may I help you today? Hello, there's a customer in there right now. Her name is Morgan Hunter. I, I was wondering if I could have her page to come to the phone. All right. Hello? Hello. May I ask who I'm speaking with? Uh, this is Roy from the corporate office. Hello? Hello, Morgan? Yes? Hey, it's Roy from the corporate office with Dickie's Barbecue Pit. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, you enjoying your meal there okay? I am. Okay, that's good. Hey, look, we saw your, your review. Uh, you gave us four stars, which is very nice, but it says the people who work there are nice. Mm-hmm. And you wrote there as in T-H-E-I-R, and that's the there that shows possession. And you should have used Yes, T-H- I understand. I should have changed it. Okay. Yeah. Now, listen, a good way to remember is when you're referring to a, a place... Uh, there, you know, it has the word here in it, as in here, mm-hmm. here, and there. So you should have used T-H-E-R-E. So the people who work there are nice. So I was wondering if you could change that, because we don't want people to think our, our customers are idiots. Absolutely. Okay, when can you do that? Can you do that right now while you're eating? No, I can do it afterwards. Uh, I could hold. I mean, if you want to put me on hold... I'll go ahead and wait while you fix that. I can fix it later. Well, I guess that's all right. Not during my lunch. Okay. Well, you don't need to cop an attitude with me. I'm just trying to help. I, I mean, you don't want... Like, do you write posts on Facebook that, that misuse there and there and there? Um, I mean, you look, you look... I don't make a habit of it, no. Okay. Well, why'd you do it this time? Why, why at our place? Really? I, I'm sitting here trying to eat my meal, and you're going to give me a grammar lesson. Okay, I want to ask you a question. Um, how is your food? Now, when I ask you that, how would you spell your? How is I, your? I, I am blown away right now. Really? Well, I just want to. I want to make sure. I, I'm just trying to help. Uh, that's all I want to do is help. And I don't know why you're getting such an attitude, Morgan. Thank you for choosing Discount Tire Company. This is Kendall. How can I help you today? Hello. Could I speak with a customer who's in there right now? His name's Eric Evans. Uh, can I ask who's calling? Uh, sure. This is Roy from his corporate office. Okay. Hold on one second. All right. Thank you. Roy? Yes. Can I ask what it's in regards to? 
Oh, it's between me and Eric. All right, he just said he doesn't know any Roy. That's why I was <laughs> wanted to make sure. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Thanks. Thank you. Right out. Hello? Hello, Eric. This is Roy from the corporate office with Discount Tires. Yes, hi. Hi. I, I'm sorry about that. I, I thought he knew who I, I was calling from the corporate office. Nope. Well, I just, I'm calling about your Yelp review for us. I just wanted to thank you for the five stars. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And, and, but on the review, you, you say that uh, all the salespeople there are friendly and courteous. But the problem is you spelt there, T-H-E-I-R, and uh-huh. that's uh, improper grammar. Uh, that there that you use, that shows possession. And what you yeah, want to show... Can you do me a favor and call me on my cell phone? Because I don't want to be talking on their line. Oh, no, this is business related. So we can tie up their line all day if we want to. Well, I'd rather not talk right now, so... Well, look, we need to get this review fixed, because you're, you're using improper grammar, and it makes our, our customers look like retards. Goodbye. Hey. As of right now, both Morgan and Eric, uh, neither one of them have updated their reviews on Yelp, so they still both look like retards. Uh, and also, neither one of them have tweeted about my call. Anyway, that's all for the show today. It's a short one, again. It's a short one, again, which, of course, is Rick from Ohio's fault. Thanks for the short show, Rick. Probably would have been another 30 minutes long if someone else would have sponsored, but whatever. We got stuck with Rick this episode. I will try my best to do another show this week. I am still out of town, but I'm going to be back in about a week. So next week, things should be back to normal for the Snowplow Show. Thanks, everyone, for not hating me, at least publicly hating me for not doing a lot of shows this past week. Things will be back to normal soon. Remember to support the show by sharing the crap out of all PLA material. You know, go look on YouTube and find your favorite prank on there, or the latest prank, and just share it all over your Facebook and your Twitter and everywhere else. Just bug the shit out of your friends to listen to our stuff. And if you don't do that, then you are required to support us on Patreon for a mere $1 a month. Patreon.com slash phone losers. If you can do either of those things, that will help us reach more shows per week. So thank you, everyone, who helps out with that. See you guys next time. I think this would be a good show to end with a brand new Weird Al song from his new album, Mandatory Fun. This will be kind of a fitting song. This is called Word Crimes. See you next time, everyone. Everybody shut up.